Hello and welcome back to the channel. Halo says hi guys. Look how big he's gotten now. He's like a full grown baby boy. Right Halo? He's mad. No, I'm just kidding, Halo. You're still really small and beautiful. Comment down below that he's beautiful. I don't want to make him feel bad. He's getting close to being a year old now, guys. Time goes by way too fast. I feel like I just got him. Anyways, guys, hello and welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new here, hi, my name's Slissy. I post really weird videos every single week, so feel free to subscribe and join the family. Also, congratulations to today's shoutout winners. If you guys want to win a shoutout in the next video, just leave a nice comment down below. Today, guys, we're going to be talking about Toys R Us, a place that you can go to and be surrounded with with every single popular toy that you could possibly think about. For those of you guys who did not grow up with Toys R Us, I genuinely feel bad for you guys. For me, growing up with Toys R Us was a surreal, magical moment. I never will forget the times as a kid when my mom brought me to a Toys R Us and she was like, you can just pick out one toy. And I would come back with like an armful of toys. She's like, mom, please buy me all of them. And then she would just buy me one of them. Anyways, Toys R Us was the place to be as a kid. Unfortunately, they ended up all shutting down and they've had some very dark and concerning moments, such as bankruptcy and hauntings and Jeffrey the Giraffe's TikTok account that kind of concerns me. <laughs> Again. Today we're going to be talking about more of the downfall of Toys R Us and the hauntings of Toys R Us. Grab some popcorn, grab a teddy bear, and buckle up, and we're going to be spilling some Toys R Us tea. So, starting all the way back with the history of Toys R Us, just because I'm a nerd and I want to cover that. Toys R Us history began with Charles Lazarus, who founded the business in 1948. That was a freaking long time ago. Toys R Us has been around for a very long time. It was founded in 1948 as a children's bargain town, and later became Children's Supermart, and finally opened its first Toys R Us store in Rockville, Maryland in 1957. This included iconic elements like Dr. G, Rab, the mascot, and all the fun rainbow stripes designs that Toys R Us carried in the nostalgic beginning. Lazarus's idea was deceptively simple. Build a supermarket, but for toys, right? Because we all loved going to the supermarket to pick out our food. Same thing, you get a cart and you fill it with toys. So that was kind of the marketing scheme behind a Toys R Us. While other toy shops had display cases and decorative interiors, Toys R Us had concrete or tile flooring to feel more like a grocery store, but with toys. And there were rows and rows of toys laid out next to each other, grocery store style, to make it feel like you were shopping for groceries. The store's bare bones appearance didn't seem to matter to consumers who were entranced with all the bright, fun, colorful toys within. And in the 1950s and 1960s, Toys R Us ushered in some of the most iconic toys of all time ever created. From the Mr. Potato Head to the Barbie, to the Easy Bake Oven. This place was booming and it popped off so well. This was the place to get your kids gifts for the holidays and their birthdays and just for everyday occasions. This is where parents brought their kids to get them a surprise. Lazarus bought and sold so many toys he was able to negotiate contracts to buy toys for cheaper than his competitors at other toy stores. This made Toys R Us into what retail historians recognize as a category killer. A company that so competitively dominates its retail category that it drives all of its competition out of business completely. So at the time, any other toy stores that were trying to compete with Toys R Us just simply couldn't because Toys R Us had the most unbeatable prices on every hot toy that was released. And don't even get me started on their mascot that I've already mentioned, Jeffrey the Giraffe. Jeffrey the Giraffe was everywhere in Toys R Us. I remember walking in and there'd be like these big statues of Jeffrey and I'd see the commercials on TV with the really creepy looking Jeffrey giraffes. Those ones were really scary. There was often Jeffrey Jeffrey giraffe murals painted around the store, on the floor, on the walls. You could not escape this big giraffe. Jeffrey the giraffe had a wife, Gigi, and children, Junior and Baby G. They all partaked in their commercials that would often play on TV, and in the early 1980s, there was even really catchy jingles that included Jeffrey the giraffe on these commercials on TV. I don't wanna grow up. I'm a toys are as cute. They got the best for so much less. Very catchy. This company ended up going from a $500 million toy industry in 1950 to a $12 billion company in 1990. That was the height and peak of Toys R Us. They sold 18,000 different toys in 1,450 locations around the globe, and they actually controlled 25% of the world's toy market at one time. However, eventually children began to change and the world began to change. Children went from using their beloved toys such as webkins, Barbie dolls, and their easy bake ovens to using their iPads and 
iPhones, which I don't even know how this happens because if I were to go back as a kid and be like, do I want the iPad or do I want the Barbie Play-Doh set? I would choose the Barbie Play-Doh set because I feel bad that kids didn't grow up with nostalgia like I did. And with the increased usage of technology came other factors such as the factor that people ended up buying toys online and competitive resellers started being able to beat Toys R Us toys prices and Toys R Us became overpriced finally for the average family to buy their kids toys. They started having increased competition Competition from online retailers and heavy debt burden from restructing factors, inability to adapt quickly to changing consumer preferences and mismanagement. And on September 18th of 2017, Toys R Us filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. However, I do believe there's been a mini comeback of Toys R Us as they've made a deal with Macy's as of recently. No, the old Toys R Us is not exactly back, but they did have the potential to bring some of the old magic kind of back into your local Macy's. Macy's has installed 451 Toys R Us branded toy shops in its stores, so you can go into your local Macy's and find some Toys R Us nostalgia, but it's just not quite the same, unfortunately. It will never be the same as walking into the original building of a huge giant Toys R Us filled with Jeffrey the Giraffe at every corner you could possibly find. There is one location left of an actual Toys R Us, and this is the one that opened on December 16th of 2021 in the flagship store in the American Dream Mall in New Jersey. And there's often TikToks filmed of Jeffrey the Giraffe shopping around this Toys R Us and tell me why these TikToks kind of scare me. I don't know what it is about Jeffrey the Giraffe in some of these TikToks in the American Dream Mall, but they're just a little bit weird. I don't know if Jeffrey the Giraffe is trying to be trendy or appealing to the new generation, but to me, some of these are kind of scary. I pretty much started this entire family. No one would be anywhere or anything without me. Sorry, Jeffrey the Giraffe. Don't mean to hurt your feelings, buddy. And to put the icing on the cake of all Toys R Us weirdness and nostalgia, there is one Toys R Us that was allegedly extremely haunted, and this one was located in Sunnyvale, California. So when Sunnyvale's Toys R Us closed in 2018, it didn't just take baby strollers, action figures, and coloring books with it. It also took one of the Bay Area's most well and enduring ghost stories with it as well. The store was originally built in 1970 as a part of a Toys R Us expansion to California. Almost immediately, the employees from this Toys R Us reported strange happenings while working at this store. Toys would fly off the shelves, people felt phantom touches on their shoulders, and faucets turned on and off by themselves. It became legendary among paranormal investigators in the late 70s, actually, when it played host to several seances by psychics, and one of those seances was shown on a popular program, That's Incredible, launching the store to international fame of being one of the world's most haunted toy stores. In one episode, Brown tells the story of the so-called Toys R Us ghost. According to Brown, she was able to make contact with the ghost in this Toys R Us, who was actually a laborer on the farm that once stood beneath the spot of the new store that was built on top of it, which was the Toys R Us. Brown actually quoted, as he walked down the hall toward me, he kept saying, have mercy on me, Beth, was what the psychic medium was picking up on. Actually, if you guys watch this episode, it's really interesting. The lady who explores this Toys R Us and does the ghost investigation picks up on a lot of things that happen to do with the property where the Toys R Us was built with the farmers who previously lived there. So basically this Toys R Us was built on top of very paranormal land that connected to the farm that was once there. And the ghosts did not like that. They wanted their house to be left alone. They did not want their house to become a Toys R Us and they were pushing things off the shelf, causing mishaps and chaos all around this Toys R Us and it became extremely viral and known for that. It's crazy how such a magical place could have so many random occurrences and even hauntings connected to it. I would love to see a bigger comeback of a Toys R Us though, but I feel like in today's world, it's just sadly never gonna happen. I don't think there could ever be something as nostalgic and memorable as a full Toys R Us store and Jeffrey the Giraffe and all of his scary phases that he's had. It's kind of insane to me how many phases the mascot Jeffrey the Giraffe has had. He started as this and then he became that. There's just a lot that goes into Toys R Us. And if you guys never got to experience it as a kid, I feel for you, that was a magical place. And yeah guys, that was the tea about Toys R Us history and the downfall of Toys R Us and the hauntings of Toys R Us. Comment down below, did you guys ever get to go to Toys R Us? And be sure to subscribe if you guys have not joined the family. I post new videos every single week. And I don't want you guys to miss out on it. It's Ben Lissy, and I'll see all the lovely people in the next video. Bye, guys. Bye.